Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I've got three replays in the German Tier 8 Premium Heavy Tank, the Asterion. Now if you do like the video, as always, don't forget to like and subscribe down below as it really does help out the channel. And yes, the Asterion. It is one of the tanks that you can get in the Halloween op. It's a tank that I am not the biggest fan of. Why? Because of the inconsistency of it. Number one, this tank is pretty average top speed for a heavy tank at 35 kilometers an hour. But it feels so poor with the mobility because the hull rotation speed is terrible at 24 degrees a second. The turret traverse is also 26 degrees a second with the build that I run, which just makes the general feel of this tank feel slow. For, you know, even though 35 kilometers an hour is a very average top speed for a heavy tank. You do have 11.07 .07 horsepower per ton ratio, which also makes it feel like it turns a bit slower as well, and it means it does struggle up to the top speed if you are not on flat especially. But if you're on flat, you sort of trundle up to the top speed, and then once you hit it, you keep it. But it just generally, the mobility of this tank feels a bit eh, right? Add into that, that the armor on this tank feels very, very hit and miss. And the reason behind that is that you have this big dozer blade on the front. And this dozer blade on the front of the vehicle is a very good, very solid 80 millimeters of spaced armor. Now that's great. That means you can get some really good bounces from that dozer blade if they hit it. But they can shoot directly above the dozer blade and hit and pen your upper plate. If they shoot where the little engine block is that's on this tank, it's only 40 millimeters, well, sorry, 30 millimeters of spaced armor, which is then also 50 millimeters of armor directly behind it, which means most tanks at tier 8, 9, 10, and even 7 can actually go straight through it and pen it if they hit that spot. Adding that it's a standard M48-ish type hull that has 110 thickness, 101 in certain spaces, and 88 in others. It means that, again, it higher pen rounds, if they are quite close to you, will just hit the upper plate and pen it if they avoid the dozer blade. And on top of that as well, the big bull, or minotaur, sorry, I keep calling it a bull, it's a minotaur. The big minotaur on the front is purely cosmetic. There is no spaced armor in that minotaur, unlike something like the... Inferno Chimera, that the big Chimera is spaced armor. That is not the case for the Minotaur. That means that there is nothing blocking the Capola on the Asterion, which is only 200 millimeters of thickness. And that means that basically everyone can pen your Capola, except for maybe tier sixes, which means that you've got a very easy weak spot to hit and pen on the old Asterion if people know where to shoot you. And this tank then becomes very Super Pershing esque. And by that, I mean the fact that if people know how to deal with you, they will go through your armor with absolute ease. And that is the pain of the Asterion. Because you also have a gun that isn't the best in the universe. It's fairly derpy. We've got 0.32 accuracy with the build that I run. 1.6 accuracy drawing movement and 0.82 accuracy drawing rotation isn't too bad with the stabilizer and all the gun perks. And that means it doesn't bloom out too badly. But you do have a 2.5 second aim time, which you do feel at times. Especially going from a full movement like you're seeing here. The other thing is you do have very poor DPM. You've got 2.2k DPM, which is 9.48 second reload, which is very, very slow on this tank. And you've got 360 alpha, which is very nice and used to be a novel thing. But the thing is the Tiger 2 and the King Tiger got buffed up to 360 and they have around 2.7k DPM and generally they are much faster than you and their armor holds up just about the same as it does, on, does for you as well. Which means that generally the Tech Tree and the Premium Tiger 2s are just better than you. And that makes it a little bit sad for the Asterion. It takes, it definitely detracts from the D Asterion in terms of my sort of willingness to say, yeah, this is a great tank, because it's not particularly the greatest tank in the universe. I mean, 2.2k DPM is not good at all. You do have 218 meters, 218 millimeters of pen, sorry, on the standard AP, with 282 premium pen, which is absolutely fantastic, by the way, with... 810, sorry, 810 meters a second shot velocity, which is slow, and that adds to the derpy feeling of the standard round. With 1,100 meters a second on the premium APCR, though, which is really quite nice and makes that round feel a lot more accurate than the standard. So what do I run in terms of a crew and equipment on the older Asterion? Well, I run Born Leader, Rapid Reload, six Sense, Situational Awareness, Steady Aim, Snapshot, Run and Gun, Rapid Aim with Trap Mechanic, the Advanced Loader, the Gun Stabilizer, and Optics. Optics to be able to get 486 meters of view range so I can spot for myself. 
the gun stabilizer to get the best accuracy drone movement um, rotation as possible so I can keep the aim circle bloomed down as much as I can. The advanced loader to try and get better DPM because 2.2k is very slow. All three gun perks once again to be able to make sure that this gun is as good as possible. And then rapid aim because the truck traverse is very slow so I'll try and make it go up to 26 degrees a second so that it can at least turn a bit quicker. You could drop snapshot by the way to run clutch braking because the hull rotation speed is very slow on this tank so you might want to make the track traverse quicker and we finished the first game there with the confederate the second class the 1439 base xp for 3386 damage that was a fairly average game there for the asterion on that map which was redshire just showed the general trundleness of the tank especially when you get top tier you can just trundle along and bounce quite a few shots because the armor is quite good but like i say it's just it's just very inconsistent in the fact that it is pretty easy to overcome if you know what you're doing, just like a super pershing. You can do stuff to negate it, but the pain as well for the Asterion is the fact that if you decide to try and angle and turn ever so slightly and give them your side, they will just go through the side of your tank as well, which can be pure pain for you. And it just adds to the general inconsistency that you feel with the tank. And that's the thing, I think I, think I just don't get a general sense of trust from this heavy tank's armour. And the gun having such bad DPM as well just means that you don't really put out damage very quickly and a lot of tanks then start to overcome your armor very quickly and you don't get to places very quickly you can't traverse to keep your strongest point of your armor at the enemy tanks very easily at all because the track traverse is terrible so you just really struggle and especially when tanks have mobility they get around you very easily and you really just can't do much about it and that's the pain with the asterion and like I say, the fact that it used to have three, the fact that it had 360 alpha used to be sort of a novelty and an asset for the vehicle because not many other tanks had 360 at tier eight as a heavy tank. But then they buffed quite a few of the German guns, like the Tiger II and the King Tiger's gun, to have that 360 alpha. And generally, their armor works just as well as yours does. But they've got better mobility, they've got better accuracy, they've got better view range. You know better gun handling and way better dpm and they've got the same alpha now which means that you just generally it's not it just doesn't feel that special anymore and the stereo on yeah it just it just kind of struggles at times and especially if you get a tier 10 match oh boy yeah the, the armor doesn't hold up whatsoever in general in that game so we're on to the second replay and the second replay we're here on severgorsk and we are up to 11 102 damage with 774 assistance and we're just watching the Stark STRV S1 because he could be a thorn in my side if I did try and go get shots at people like the Hydra. So I'm looking at the Hydra, I've got AP loaded, I'm going to struggle to pen that guy if I don't hit the Coppola and we did actually thankfully hit the Coppola and shut him down but we did take a hit in the side from the medium tank that was there that is currently spotted i don't quite know i didn't see what it was oh it's t 34 one we took a shot in the side from the t 34 one and that like i said where the stark strv is currently and the uh, t 34 one they are going to cause us a bit of pain because well they're going to be able to shoot us in the side and shoot us in the front while we're trying to turn to shoot the guys that are down the b line so we're just watching these guys so that we can try and get a shot in if we can but again the awkward shots that we have at these guys is a is is awkward for this tank and it's derpiness at times but we do get the shot in to shut down the t 34 one so i decided to pull forward to see if i can see anyone and get any shots down towards their cap but there's a medium tank in our base and it's like okay you know what no we're only at 1300 damage 1233 assistance i want to do more but we have to go back and defend the base it's just something we've got to do we can't let them cap because that's well, it's always a possibility, isn't it, right, in this game? Is that if people have the opportunity to cap, oh boy, usually they take it. So we're going to trundle on back because our team hasn't bothered. Our team is generally just sitting in the middle of Severigos, which is never a good idea. But they're generally sitting in there and trying to progress towards the enemy spawn. So looks like we're going to be the only one. And again, I don't want to leave the enemy team with open cap. So we're just going to go back and try and reset. But no one's capping at the minute. We're halfway back. I know that if anyone does jump in the cap, I should be able to get back. So again, I'm going to put pressure on this freedom and help my guys out in the middle. So we're putting shots downrange into the freedom. And there's the derpiness of the gun. Gone. You didn't need to miss that shot on the freedom. But now we're being attacked by a dreadnought first time spotted and the medium tank there. So we put a shot through the dreadnought's front and we're bouncing the P43. Thankfully, the dreadnought decides to ram us. 
Now, I'm really hoping this guy doesn't load heat, because if he loads heat and goes for our turret, he will pen us, and it won't be a good time. He could also fire HE and just splashes, but I really want to get rid of the Dreadnought, and I'm not that bothered about the P43, because I can turn for the P43, but the Dreadnought is truly a dangerous tank if I let him live, so we make sure to get rid of that guy. The P43 just... Yeah, he yolo passes and then slid straight off the hill. He must have had auto drive on. So that's left us in a safe position now with the Dreadnought Deb. We're up to 2.8k damage with 1,233 assistance. And I'm thinking, do I go back towards where the cap is and try and get behind them? No, you know what? We may as well use this ledge while we've got it and try and shoot them in the behind. So there's the Freedom. He's a one-shot RBRT. And we shut down the Freedom there. And now we've got rear shots into this T-32. So it's like, okay, Mr. T-32, I'm going to put some shots into you. We've got to be careful, though, because the artillery is trying to get shots at us. And again, that could be painful. But it is spotted by the heavy tanks that are progressing towards their base. So maybe he will be distracted by them. We set the T-32 on fire. The artillery finally hits us. But we're going to wait for the tracks to come back on because maybe we'll get a shot now into this T-32 who is trying to find a shot at us. He ricochets off our blade and we get lucky and set him on fire once again, finishing him off. We get the fifth kill of this game with 4.7k damage and 1233 assistance damage. Now we're unspotted, we're going to move and try and help this heavy tank and TD if we can. There's a 416 an ISU 130 and the artillery. Unfortunately, our Tiger One gets shut down by the 416, which tells me that he is still somewhere towards their base. And you know what? I decided, nope, not doing that. Because the 416 will outspot me by miles. And he's got a very good gun. And especially if he fires heat, he will butcher the front of my tank. So, well, unless he hits the dozer blade, obviously, because spaced armor. But. Yeah, we don't want to risk that. So instead, we're going to take the smarter move and go across the bridge in the middle and try and flank round to where their spawn is. Try and catch out the artillery and go through the little gap that is at EF8. And, yeah, see if we can find the tanks. We don't know where the ISU 130 is. We have no idea. So I'm assuming that the ISU 130 is up with the Object 416 and possibly in their campy TD spot that overlooks their spawn at about B0. And um, we're now just hoping and praying that we don't get out spotted and we can just catch one of them off guard, find them both maybe, and shoot them. Because we are a one shot to the ISU 130, which is not a good time. The 416 were a two shot, but artillery could also just splash us to death at that point. Our TD is moving in down the A line. They've got to be very careful that they don't just get caught out. And so we're just going to keep ourselves moving. And this is where the slowness of the Asterion can be a bit of a pain. Because it's like, oh, come on, tank. Trundle, 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 trundle. It's what we're doing. Because even on flat, like I say, we are doing only about 30 kph. So we see the shot from the right. And I think, okay, that's just in front of me, right? Okay, we get spotted. And I'm like, oh, no. Okay, I need to get up behind this rock. Keep myself in cover from the 416 that was on the left. And the IC-130 catches us out and shoots us in the side. That was just unlucky, really. And um, we got finished off there. We came second on the MVP screen. We finished with five kills, 4.7k damage, 1,300 base XP, which was the ace tank of the high caliber with that, yeah, 1,300 base XP on a loss. Sad times. The ISU proper caught us out off guard. I knew there was something on the... The pain is, I knew there was something on the right, but the fact that I got spotted coming around that corner made me went, okay, no, I've got to get up and get out of what is possibly the 416 looking at me, or the ISU 130, one of the two, and yeah, we just drove up and sadly it was the ISU that was hiding, waiting... Hiding in waiting to get us. But we're on to the third and final replay of this video, and we are on this map, which is... Fjords! Yeah, Fjords. And what I'm going to do is go to the Brawly Heavy Tank location, which not that many people since Fjords has come out, or come back, I should say, ever actually go to. The corner at J45 is a really good location for heavy tanks to brawl, because you can kind of go hull down from our side there and try and fight the people that side scrape off that corner. They can also have spots where they can go a bit hull down and side scrape on that corner as well, and it can be just a generally good heavy tank brawling location the problem is for our spawn is that if we do win that j6 position if we push out around the corner we are very open to tank destroyers that do camp at hj9 and that can be a bit of a problem but we can get to that later so we come around the corner find the object 7032 black 
And we managed to, thankfully, he misses and we get the shot through his lower plate. We are very alone, though, because two of our TDs have stayed back at F4. And there's currently, like I say, a KV5 and a 430... It's not 430 version 2, not object 7032. Sorry. If these two guys were to rush me, it could be curtains, because their DPM would outdo me very, very easily. I mean, even the object 7032 can quite easily outdo me for DPM, because he's got two barrels that reloads in a similar time for 390 alpha. And he could just double barrel me, which wouldn't be a good time. But, with the angle we've got, we could ricochet the 7032 black, as long as he doesn't hit our cupola. If he hits the turret front, he'll bounce. If he hits that engine spot on the front of the upper plate and misses the dozer blade, he could pen that as well. But if he just shoots at the upper at the dozer blade, sorry, he will bounce quite a lot of shots. And a lot of people see the Asterion and have no idea what to do, especially with that dozer blade. And they do just shoot straight through the dozer blade. Which is why I say it is a super Pershing in heavy tank form, right? Because when people know what to do against it and know where to shoot the Asterion, you can take it out pretty easily. But if they don't know what to do, then this thing can bounce a lot of damage. As is what has exactly happened here with this 7032 Black, who really did struggle to go through us. Now we've got the KV-5 in front of us. It's just this KV-5 and the Stura Mill in front. Which I'm not particularly worried about a KV-5 because his standard pen will really struggle to go through the Asterion. And his premium pen will pen the Capola if he hits it. But still, because of random angles on the Capola, he can bounce on it. So again, I'm not particularly worried about this guy. And I know with... Wow, what a ricochet. Did you see that one fly off into space? Wow, that was, that was good. Anyway. Yeah. This guy... I know exactly where to pen this guy, and I can do it relentlessly, sadly, for him. One HP and a dream. 360 alpha game. We could have killed that guy and not left him on one HP, but there we go. We've got an AT-15 that's finally joined us, and that thing machine guns, and he finishes off at the KV-5. We put the Stura Mill down to a one-shot for the old AT-15. I pull back a bit so that he can get it. And this is where it's a risky, risk it for a biscuit. I know there could be TDs. I'm trying to turn in as quickly as possible. And my job is to get to this house as quickly as I can. I know that I could spot the TDs that were shooting at me from their base. But I wanted to get safe behind this house as quickly as I could. And that is exactly what's happened. We bounced quite a few shots from them, but we did take a few. But now we're starting to get shot in the side by the Eagle 7 that's in the middle. I didn't expect that guy to have to start shooting at me or have shots at me. We're now tracked in an awkward spot, which is, again, giving that Eagle 7 free shots. But I really need my tracks to get back up so I can turn for the Eagle 7. Because I'm now unspotted, number one. But number two, I am safe from those TDs with this house on my right. And I can poke round, safe from the TDs, and shut down the Eagle 7. Which is exactly what we do. Good night, Mr. Eagle 7. The Vanguard comes for us. This guy could kill us if he actually had attacked us there and just got round to our side and clipped us. But thankfully, he hesitated because he saw me point my gun at him. And we finish off the Vanguard. We're up to 4,100 damage with 81 assistance. And I'm just trying to figure out what I want to do to play this. Because at this point, I could be a one-shot for whatever is up there. So we see the SU-152. Who got spotted by our light tank? We put a shot through the side of the IS... Sorry, the SU-152. Or is it an ISU-152? Did I say? SU-152, the tier 7. And our Vanguard shuts him down. There's now the Shrek or the Shrimp or whatever you want to call it. We, the shubble blah, 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 TVP, we put a shot through the side of his turret and he gets finished off by the buggy bogger. And um, now that TD's gone, I'm like, okay. I'm sure with the amount of shots that were going at me, there is something else up there. It's just hiding because it's seen its friends blow up. So what we're going to do is we are going to progress because we know the heavy tank is up at A8. We're going to progress and see if we can get either the SU-130 PM or the Scorpion. So I'm thinking, okay, you know what? I've got 60 penetration for 440 alpha on this gun, if I load HE. And with 60 pen, I can pen the turret of a Scorpion G. I can also pen an SU-130 PM. And that ups my alpha to 440. That is juicy. So actually, I'm going to load HE, and we're going to go find one of these two TDs that I am convinced is up here. Now, you know when you're convinced of something and you're wrong? Yeah, the, it tends to sting you in the ass, right? So we are going to go see if we can find one of these TDs. Because I'm convinced they're just hiding. 
over here. They saw the light tank and went, nah, you know what, I'm just going to hide now. Just because just of how many shots we took. But there's a TD behind us. And I was like, oh boy, there's a TD directly behind us. That's not good. We turn for it. It's the Scorpion G. We fire the HE round at him for 457. It pens. I should have loaded AP at this point because I can finish him off with one shot. But we've got the HE. When he gets unspotted. We fire the HE. We don't lead it well enough. We actually missed the shot. And on the move, how big his aim circle must have been. He finishes us off with a shot on the move. Sad times there for the Asterion, but we finished with the victory. Three kills, 5.3k damage, 5.5k blocked. Ace tank of the high caliber, the sniper medal with that 1950 base XP. A really great game there for the Asterion, which like I say, when the armor works, it's absolutely glorious. But there are quite a few ways to take it out. And it is, I say, the best way to describe it is it's a heavy tank version of the Super Pershing. When, when, when you come against someone that hasn't got a clue, you will bounce a lot and you'll feel great. But at the same time, if you come against someone that knows what they're doing, they'll go straight through every time, which is pure pain. And your gun handling and DPM isn't the best compared to what else is out there. So as always, everybody, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Great success.